hope everybody had a good week. <clears throat> Maybe you got some crafting in or you did some fun things. Um, I would love to hear about it. Um, today's video, let me start it off by putting out a shout out to some of my friends. The first one is Sid. She sent me a huge box of ephemera that she collected on her travels. <clears throat> she was traveling pretty much all over Europe over the over the holidays and she collected little bits and bobs and um, sent them to me afterwards. She knows I love them for my junk journals and it's just it was so much fun. I mean all the the things she thought of collecting was I mean hilarious. I absolutely love everything Sid and she also put these little treasures among other things in there that she got in Bath when she was in England. Um, a little heart and a little bee and they are just so precious i absolutely love them and the light is so beautiful when it shines through them so they're gonna go on some pretty ribbons and then i will hang them in my window thank you so much i absolutely love them the little bee is just it makes me scream i love it <laughs> um and the other shout out is going to my friend sandy which <clears throat> she runs a rescue farm with a whole bunch of animals that needed a home um, sheep and llamas and, sh and horses and cats and um, a bunch of huge 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 dogs um, she has a website I'm gonna link it down below for you guys uh, for things she's also going to get into selling ephemera and oh my god her stuff is amazing if you're into junk journaling you may want to keep an eye on on that place and when she goes live i'm definitely going to link it and make a video because i mean really her her things she shows me photos and i just drool it's just absolutely amazing stuff anyway sandy bought herself this stamp set and um a few days she showed it to me and i just i it's just so adorable and um a few days later a package came and it had this exact stamp set in it so Sandy went out and she bought me the exact same stamp set because it has bees in it and Sandy thought I must have the bees <laughs> and I just I absolutely love it thank you so much Sandy these bees are going to you will see these more often it's just I absolutely love it thank you you guys spoil me way 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 too much it's just ridiculous thank you both so much anyway today's video um, let me let me see. I hope I pronounced that name correctly. But Anne Bettencourt um, asked about my pin cushions, um, what kinds I have, and how what what I what they are stuffed. Um, what's the stuffing is in in these pin cushions? So I figured I'm gonna make a little video and I'm gonna show you how to make one of the pin cushions I make. So let me get them all over here. There's a range of different pin cushions. And other things that I'm going to show you today. So first off, this is the kind of pincushion we're going to make today. They're little bottle cap pincushions. They are super cute. I adore them. I have many, many, many of these. I have given many, many, many of these away. Um, they are just super, you know, practical and they fit in my little travel pouches. So um, because they're so small and just, you know, I love them. And again, they fit in the travel pouches, so they come in very, very handy. Or, you know, around the house, just wherever you would might need a pincushion, they fit. Um, and like I said, there's a whole bunch of different ways to put the fabrics together on that. <clears throat> you can use any of your um, paper piecing shapes to make a pincushion. I think this one is stuffed with wool, like roving. Um, I have read somewhere that <coughs> sorry, the lanolin in wool helps um, keep the needles sharp and in better condition. So I put wool in this one. I use fiber fill. These are stuffed with fiber fill. Um, so I just, you know, I read it. I figured, hey, why not? I have it around the house because I'm, I'm a spinner as well. So um, I have it. Why not try it out? So there's wool roving in here. <clears throat> this is another one that I just made for one of my travel pouches. Um, I don't know if you can hear that, but this one is filled with crushed walnut shells and a little bit of fiber fill on top. Um, I've also read that the walnut shells help keep the, the needles sharp. So I had them around the house. Why not try, try it out? So I put some in here. 
verdict is still out. I haven't noticed the difference, but you know, sometimes I put walnut shells in my pin cushions. <clears throat> um, so that's another one. And this is just different fabrics that I um, sewed together and then embroidered. I, you probably remember this. So you just sew bits of fabric together and then you cut out the shape that you want and, you know, back it with something or you could even just leave it, you know, this size if you need a bigger one. And this is not a pin cushion at all. It's actually a trivet I made for my table where you put, you know, hot stuff on it. Um, it is filled, <clears throat> it's very old and it's filled with either rice or lentils i am not sure and it also had some lavender on top because you know if you put something hot on there i figured maybe it would make it smell good but um i never used it as a trivet so i wouldn't even be able to tell you <laughs> anyway um i found out that needles stick really well in there and that it's heavy enough to stay put wherever i put it so this is the one that lives on my desk at all times i really like this because you know again it doesn't move <clears throat> Then this is a um, experiment, actually. It's it's stuffed with um, non-recyclable trash, like, you know, the plastic that sometimes um, pasta comes in or, you know, um, candy wrappers, that kind of thing that's in here. If you want to make one, don't... And, I originally made this because I wanted to make a bath mat out of it with different pebble shapes. <clears throat> um, so that's what this started out with. But as in with anything in my house, it turns into a pin cushion. It does work. Don't make the core of plastic too hard because then your pins won't go in or out. Um, it does work. It makes a little bit of a sound when you push this in. I'm not sure how much I love this one. My cats lo seem to love it more than I do. They use it as a as a toy, so I don't really use it much as a pincushion because they use it mostly. Um, here I have a needle book that I made. <clears throat> it's basically just some fabric and felt in between. Um, and I applicate this on top. It's I like making um, pincushions or needle books for each project that I'm starting because it gives me a little bit of a smaller way to addition the fabrics that I'm going to use. Do I even like working with them? You know, how do they really look together or sewn with the thread that I picked for this project? So it's nice to, to have this. And I mean, I think it's kind of cute to have a matching needle books for things or matching pin cushions for your projects, but that might just be, you know, a little weird me. Um, so this is in this little tin because this is how I carry it around right now. <clears throat> it's for my embroidery journal that Sandy talked me into doing this year. These are my favorite um, thimbles. I use leather thimbles. These are from a tiny Etsy shop here in Washington. I will link her Etsy shop. I'm not affiliated, but I absolutely love these. She makes them herself. They are, I believe, when I bought these, they were $7. I don't know if that changed at all, but I'm going to link them. I have three of these. She has different leathers. Some are tougher, some are not so, you know, some are a little bit softer. Um, they work really, really well for me. I had the more expensive French one um, that you can buy that just didn't work. I mean, it was $20 and the needles went through the seam on the side and it got ripped up so quickly just by me quilting my little um, hexagon quilts and it wasn't even done you know I had it maybe two months and they wouldn't they wouldn't refund or even replace it and um, so I went ahead and I looked for something else and I found these and I'm so glad I'm not going to get any other leather thimbles and these work I mean I think Clover has some leather thimbles I've not used these so I wouldn't be able to tell you how they are there's other places who make leather thimbles obviously look around if you want to try them these work for me so that's what I stick with again not affiliated but I'm going to link you the shop the Etsy shop um this is a travel sewing kit that I just recently finished um I made a little push push closure there I need to make a pin cushion for in here. I haven't made one yet. This used to be, a friend gave me this. Um, this used to be one of these boxes. And 
this box was in in Sid's um, Mega Ultra Giant ephemera box. The new ones have a magnetic closure, which is really really great. The old ones used to have a um, ribbon closure, which I just cut off because it was a black ribbon, and I just did not like that for my little um, traveling sewing kit. But these, you know, they work great. You throw them in your in your purse, and they are they're pretty good. Um, oh, usually this lives in here too. Um, oh, there we go. So if you want to see how I made this, I'm, I plan on making a couple more. Um, so just leave me a comment and I can definitely make a video on how I made this. It's a lot of fun. So for today, I figured we are making one of these. They're easy and fast and I mean, they come in so handy. It's not my original idea. I cannot remember for the life of me who came up with it. If you know, please link because I would like to give credit where credit is due. It's a great idea and um, they're easily made. They're great gifts for people who sew. Um, they're also really great in swaps, you know, just as a little extra. What you need, a bottle cap. These, this is from my water bottle. You can use the soda bottle caps, you know, anything this size. I haven't tried them out on bigger ones because this is the size I like, but by all means, if you have a larger bottle cap, go for it. You need um, fabric that doesn't ravel. I like to use felt for the bottom in any kind of, you know, color. This is uh, faux leather that I use, but it's really, really hard to sew. I don't want to do this again. Um, some felt and then some fabric for the top. And I chose this cotton. You could use uh, lace overlays. You can use something that you already embroidered on. You could use um, um, just <clears throat> plain fabric and embroider on it, and then and then make it into the tip into the top. That's you know, it's all um, how you whatever you have, whatever you want to use. So first things first, you need to. Uh, grab a marker. You may not want to use a Sharpie, especially not a red Sharpie on white felt. I'm just going to do this because I want you to see what I'm doing. Um, grab a marker that doesn't bleed through your fabric, um, you know, so that you don't have to deal with the um, fallout after. So what you do is you can either, you want your felt to end up right here at the top of the bottle cap. So what I do is I hold it there. And I wrap it around. I'm not sure. Yeah, this isn't. So I'm going to use this end. Oh, I can use this end probably. You want it to overlap a little. And this is just enough. So what I'm going to do is I put my bottle cap here. Make sure that it... You want it just a little, little, little bit um, taller than the actual bottle cap. So you can... Um, you know, and then you can either measure. I'm not big on measuring. I'm, you know, eyeballing most of what I do. And then you just, oh. <clears throat> I don't know why this ruler has that, has that notch. It's, it's fairly sharp. I, f I found this actually, actually my husband found this on the road and he brought it home for me because he knows, um, you know, I can always use rulers. I, I don't know how this happened, it happened before I got it. And then you use your bottle cap again, flip it over. I trace it this way, like so, just trace it around. And then, <clears throat> here we go, you use your scissors and we already made this strip a little taller than the actual bottle cap, so I can cut this on the, on the mark, actually. But for the, um, for this, you want to cut it out just a little bit outside of the line. Not too much, because you don't want it too, too big. But just a little bit outside the line. Um, And if you cut more precisely or draw more precisely than I am, it's actually going to be round and not an oval. But there we have it. Right, so you also need, obviously, some sewing thread. Let me grab some here, my sewing thread. 
I wax my sewing thread because it keeps it from tangling and it makes it a little tougher. Um, I used to buy my beeswax at the co-op here in town. I have since found this cruelty-free and organic beeswax that I buy and I make them myself. All you do is just hold your thread um, here and pull it over a couple of times. I then like to just run it through my fingers a bit to um, get some friction going and melt the wax a little more into the thread. I keep my thread double for this. You don't have to. You can use it single. Um, it works both ways. All right. So now, hold on just a second. Right, I'm back. Sorry about that. <clears throat> so you can go one of two ways. You can either um, sew it together. If you've left a little bit of room, um, you can sew it together wrong sides out and then flip it over like I did with this one. Or you can just um, sew it together, you know, with the with the right sides out and have this little bit of a seam going around here. It's really not that noticeable because it's so small, but um, either way you do it is fine. If you flip it over, make sure you make this a little bigger than your actual bottle cap because otherwise, you know, it's not going to fit. Um, so I'm going to do it this way around. So I have wrong sides together. Again, you may want to pick, you know, a uh, marker that doesn't leave marks like that. And then all you do is just you go around like so. Um, I forgot the name, the English name of the stitch. I apologize. Uh, but you just sew it on all the way around. Make sure you don't go too far in. Um, you know, if you, especially if you want to like flip it over and you need to ease it in. The way I do this is I sew to a point and then, um, get my thread out of the way. And then basically I just fold it like so. And that kind of eases it around the round shape because the strip is obviously, um, you know, a straight piece of fabric and the bottom is round so you need to ease it around that corner a little so basically you just keep going around it like so and then when you get you see where it kind of stands over see now I I have to fold it just a little to kind of ease it around that corner so I'm gonna sew all the way around it and then I'll be right back okay so I sewed around it and I'm gonna show you my last stitch goes in just so that these two overlap so the last stitch catches the bottom and the f the beginning of this little strip and the end okay i'm just gonna go oh come on pull this and um, i'm gonna sew all the way to the end of the strip you don't want it to overlap it a lot just a few you know millimeters and then you will tie off your thread and clip it. There we go. Now I flip it inside out. Make sure that you like really get the get that you know turned inside out and then I like to dry fit it <clears throat> and this is why you need it a little bigger um, when you want to flip it inside out so that it actually you know ends up fitting the bottle cap so here we are this works now you can use for this you can just use some glue stick i like to put some glue stick on the bottom right there and then maybe around the edges a little just a little bit there we go and then you pop it in here and you make sure that you adhere this and pull it up towards the edge. Now, if you left a lot of room there, you could maybe um, cut this a little shorter, but honestly, I like when it stands over just a little bit, like so. Okay. Oh, I meant to use this actually for the top edge. Hmm, I wonder if I can still sew this, sew this on. I probably could just glue it around the around the edges once it's all yes that's what i'm going to do so <clears throat> so we're here now and then you would finish sewing this up um 
and for that I probably leave my thread you can leave your thread double for this make sure you put your knot under so that you don't see it and again you would use something you know that is more in line with the fab felt fabric with the felt color so that you wouldn't see the the stitches here and all you do is just again um sew this up you could probably just do a running stitch up there ow oop or a back stitch or whatever whatever you like you could maybe use some embroidery floss and put put a little x right there or whatever you just want these two bits to be together you know that they don't like flap around there we go <clears throat> so that's the bottom I'm going to end this thread, knot it, and then I'm sticking it just back through here. Oops. Oh, wonderful. Right. And clip it there. Okay. This is standing over a little here, so I'm, I'm going to even that out a bit. If you measure, that won't happen. <laughs> but, you know, I don't. <laughs> Which can bite you sometimes <laughs> okay so this is done you set that aside and then <clears throat> you need your fabric that you want for the top you don't need a huge amount a little bit will do um, I use any shape you have that you can put that you can put on here and trace um, you would obviously trace it on the back unless you have a little um, you know, image that you actually want to have on there. Where's my hair? It is. You trace around it, just, just like so. You could just cut out a square. Really, it's it's not that. <clears throat> you roughly cut this out. Does not have to be, um, you know, balls on accurate, as my cousin Minnie says. Um, it just you just want it. There we go then you grab some more thread and for this i have a double again or you could use crochet cotton um if you want something stronger where did my needle go i'm just gonna use this one all right go Oop. wax your thread and running your fingers over your thread a little before you start um, sewing with it and maybe even before you wax it helps to get that over um, twist out a little <clears throat> that also helps a little with it not um, um, tangling up as much so you you always want to do that okay and then you just go in a running stitch all the way around this all the way because we want to gather this up doesn't have to be great doesn't have to be super even um, don't make the stitches too big because you want it to hold the stuffing in but, you know, it doesn't have to be, like, amazingly accurate and pretty because it's going to be hidden. So. I'm going to finish this really quickly because I'm pretty sure it's boring to watch. I'll be right back. Right. So it's I sewed all the way around and then all you do is just pull on the end and make sure it all gathers up. You grab your fiber fill and I have a tendency to overstuff these things <clears throat> so I usually just grab a little bit and stick it in here and then I like I said I dry fit it all together before um, because again I have a tendency to overstuff these things all you do is pull here carefully you don't want it to rip and you know here is your little pin cushion and then you stick the bottom of it in here again I dry fit it because I overstuff these things you want um, 
it all to just go in there and you do want your pin cushion to be nice and firm you don't want it just you know like um but you do want to see if it fits because you may have to take some fiberfill out or put some extra in so this this will work this will work because i'm going to stuff it all um you know i'm going to stuff it all in there so this will work um let me show you how much is in here about this much you could probably use a little less um, maybe let's put a little so about this much all you do is you stick it in here again and then um you just gather this up hold it and then gently gently gather this up as you stuff all the filling in there there we go and then what i do once it's all gathered up like so i grab my needle and i just put a couple of stitches through here again they don't have to be pretty they will not be seen i just don't want it to um open up on me while i'm trying to stuff it all into the bottle cap just a few stitches i'm getting used to being in frame <laughs> i'm learning <laughs> okay just a few stitches through here maybe run this around the outside a few times there we go and then knot off your thread and sl and cl clip it there we go done with the sewing part there we go right now <clears throat> you need something a little stronger than the um, glue stick you could use hot glue but the way I, I do this is um, I hold it like this and then I really I stuff all the edges in there so hot glue wouldn't work for me so I am using um, Aline's tacky glue because that is what I have uh, any any liquid glue will do let's hope it comes out hello oh come on oh let's see apparently this doesn't work too um i have more i have this i have this craft glue but the the tacky glue honestly is my favorite <clears throat> but school glue will work too and glitter glue i could use glitter glue but white school glue would also work or the um uh, what's it called poster board glue but that smells the poster board glue so you want to get glue on all of these places okay all right that's that glue everywhere and then you take this and you stick it on here and you start just sticking all of this down there like so all the way around and kind of make sure that you hold it that it doesn't come back up you don't want it to come back up all right one more come on all right so you can if you have a big clip you can clip this and let it rest for a while um to i don't have one of those really big binder clips i mean i have one but my bird is using it to keep up his mirror <laughs> and i don't want to take it from him um so you would clip this and let it dry obviously or you you can um okay let me let me just uh, i need to weigh this down really quickly does this work yes i don't want to have this fabric cushion pop up again so <clears throat> what you do once it's dry or once it's um you can even do it before it's dry like i do um you grab this and i like to just go around and so this felt to that pin cushion just you know it doesn't have to be very pretty you just want to have the two connected so 
so that the felt doesn't accidentally slip off or the pin cushion slip out. I just sew it together just like this. Take a bite out of here, a bit bigger, <clears throat> and then a little out of the felt. Oop, come on. Just like so all the way around. You want to have this together. And um, you end up putting either some lace or whatever over this over this connection right here so you wouldn't see it so it doesn't have to be you know super beautiful just make sure that it stays together there we go that's the end you tie off your thread oops there we go and then I just run my thread through there and I cut it off on the top. There, we go. there you have that. And now, um, you know, you could use a little bit of baker's twine just to cover up that edge. I should have stuck this in a little better. <clears throat> there. Um, just to cover up where those two fabrics meet, make a little, make a little bow over here with the baker's twine that actually would look really cute um or some some little little bits of lace um not this i don't like this one um, just a little bit of small lace <clears throat> that you have you can put this around it cover up the entire bottle cap if you wanted to you know just make it pretty um you can glue that on if you like i'm going to put on this bit of sari silk because I think it works and I actually wanted to sew this on instead of the felt on the side there but I didn't but this is what I'm gonna go glue on Let me get this out of the way and that out of the way and then here's my glue um start here Come on. I'm just gonna glue it on you probably could sew it on which is probably actually the better idea to sew it on, but you know, why not live dangerous once in a while? So I'm gonna start here. I'm just gonna run this folded in half all the way around. And I think I will sew the end here over. Nah, I'm just gonna glue it. What the hell? In for a penny, right? Okay. Oh, come on. I'm running out of glue. And then when that is done, oh, I don't like that. Off with you. Um, you could. Look, I have a little shell right here that I thought would be really cute. I'm sure the cat got it. Okay, let's get a different one. Um, oh, right here. So you could use a little shell. Or a button. Um, that's a button too. You could like glue a little shell on here. Oh, I think that's really cute. And there's glue, so that's what we're gonna do. Where did the rest of the glue go here? So you just you could probably use hot glue for this part. Again, I probably should have sewn this on, but oh well. I might just go around it a little bit later 
<laughs> with some stitches. But there you have it, a little tiny. Um, and I could have hot glued this on. Oh, well, this is a mess now. <laughs> but I might replace this later. <laughs> I have enough left, I think. Yeah, I have enough left to go around in one again. Um, but, I mean, it's kind of cute. And I should have maybe hot glued that shell on or sewn it on. It has holes in it. But now you have a new pin cushion. <clears throat> you could... Fill these with the crushed walnut shells. You could fill this with, um, obviously, wool if you have it at home, or the fiber fill if you don't. Um, a lot of things work. Cotton, if you have cotton balls, you could probably put that in. Um, you could probably also do a better job in sticking this in so that it's nice and even all the way around. More like these. I took my time with these, but, you know, I don't want this video to last forever. Um, but make some, they're cute. And you know, you can have them everywhere. I just really, <laughs> the fringe kills me. <laughs> anyway, there you have it. Um, make some and let me see them. If you are on Instagram or places, show them off to me because I want to see them. Okay. Um, my Instagram handle is sidewalk pirate. Find me. Let's hook up over there so we can, you know, show off what we're making. Um, if there's anything else you want to know about, please let me know. Oh, one more thing. Um, somebody asked how I make the fabric books. And I wasn't sure if you were talking about the Fox one, which is my um, traveler's notebook, or if you were talking about these, which just have a fabric cover, um, but are, you know, um, well, they're soft cover. So you can make these with fabric covers too, but these are sewn journals. So do let me know which one you were talking about and let me see stephanie fröhlich um left that comment about the fabric book so stephanie if you let me know if you meant the one with the fox or the other one that would be nice and i definitely will put um a video together on those later on so we had the pin cushion today and i'm working on i'm working my way through as those requests came in okay so I hope you all have a good rest of your Sunday and have a really great week next week. Um, and if you make one of these, I would like to see them and, you know, please show them to me. It would be so much fun. Anyway, that is that. Have a good week, guys. See you next Sunday. Bye.